My name is Neil Paulimus from Stack Graphics Technologies, and I'm going to show you how you can use dynamic statistical graphics to enhance your data story. The basic premise of what I'm about to show you is that by adding animation to a normally static graph, we can dramatically increase its information content. This is particularly helpful when you want to visualize changes over time. Some data require special types of graphs, as you'll see, but standard graphs are adequate for many data sets. In this presentation, I'm going to look at eight different data sets using some interesting types of animated graphs. We're going to look at COVID-19 cases and deaths around the world. We're going to look at polar ice, fish counts, temperatures in Washington, D.C. We'll take a look at how the U.S. population has changed since 1950, show how things like infant mortality have changed in various countries, and also take a look at wind speed and direction using a wind rose. A good way to visualize the evolution of COVID around the world is by using a demographic heat map. I'm going to show you on a daily basis the number of new cases per million in various countries. And we're going to color it from dark blue if there were no cases to dark red if there were a thousand cases per million. So let's let time run and you'll see the first evolution of COVID in China and across North America. As we go through 2020, uh, you do see some green down in South America and a few other countries but it remains relatively blue, relatively low, until we get toward the end of the year. We're now into November, and all of a sudden you see hot spots both in Europe and in the United States. It starts to get better uh, once the vaccines are available, but it was still fairly hot in uh, April and May. And you can see a, a couple countries with some very high case rates. And there we stand on August 1st, um, mostly blue, some green, um, fairly dramatic changes. And I think a good way to look at the distribution of cases. In order to show the 20 countries around the world with the most COVID-19 deaths and how they occurred over time, I'm going to create a dynamic Pareto chart. We're starting in March of 2020, and you can see at the beginning, Italy and Spain had the largest number of deaths. It did not take long, though, for the United States to take over the first position, and Great Britain was in second position by June of last year. Again, you can see some moving around. You can see Peru uh, moving up, and there comes Mexico up now into the fifth position. It's an interesting way to illustrate those countries that had the most deaths. So let me, to, in order to save a little time, move up to May of 2021. You can see by May of 2021, the United States had a fairly demanding lead, but then by June, it slowed down dramatically. The deaths in Brazil continued to rise quickly, as did deaths in India, until by the beginning of August of 2021, it was the United States, followed fairly closely by Brazil, India, Mexico, and Peru.
An interesting graphic for displaying monthly data is a radar plot. Here you see measurements of the amount of sea ice at the North and South Pole each month during 1979. The data are scaled so if a point is in the center of the graph that represents zero and as you get toward the outer edge that represents 20. Now you can see that there's quite a bit of variation from month to month in the amount of sea ice. And as you would expect, the ice is heavier at one pole during the summer and the other pole during the winter. Now if you'd like to see how the data have changed over time, I'm going to let time start to run. And what you'll see as we move from one year to the next is a fair amount of oscillation, a fair amount of variability in the amount of ice one year to the next. You may also notice that the amount of ice has gotten somewhat smaller. The volume of these polygons has gotten smaller over time. That's easier to see if I run you back to 1979 and then forward to 2019. Unfortunately, the amount of sea ice has diminished quite significantly. This deviation dashboard shows fish counts on a yearly basis at various locations in the Gulf of Maine. You're seeing time change between 1963 and 2003. Each of the bars is standardized so that you can see at a particular location how much that count deviated from its mean in multiples of the standard deviation. As time evolves, you notice strong correlations between the counts at various locations you can also observe some unusual years, such as 1979. This time series spiral plot shows the maximum temperature by month in Washington, D.C. between 2008 and 2020. You notice a very strong seasonal pattern in the temperatures, and you can also see changes from year to year. This population pyramid shows the distribution of the United States population by age and gender. You're looking at the data in 1950 shortly after World War II. You see the bar at the bottom, a very large number of individuals aged between zero and four years. This is typically referred to as the baby boom. If we now let time evolve, you'll notice the baby boomers starting to get older and the distribution by age flattening out. You'll also notice a large increase in the number of individuals 85 or older, particularly females. This bubble chart shows data from the World Bank describing characteristics of countries around the world. The data is from 1961 the data in the current shot, and each bubble is a separate country. What you can see back in 1961 is there was a large difference between the developed world and the developing world. On the y-axis, you see life expectancy. And while life expectancy was between 65 and 75 in the developed world, it was as low as 30 years in the developing world. Fertility rate is shown on the x-axis. 
That's the average number of children per woman. And again, you can see a pretty stark difference between the two groups of countries. There are two other variables shown as well. <laughs> the size of the bubble is proportional to the percentage of the population in a particular country that live in rural areas. And the color of the bubble represents the infant mortality. And again, some dramatic differences in inter infant mortality between these two groups of countries. Well, let's let the year start to run. What you'll see as time goes on is that the entire world moves up toward the upper left-hand corner. In pretty much every country in the world, the life expectancy went up, the fertility rate went down, and you notice there are no oranges or reds left, so that infant mortality is also dropped everywhere. Now, you can also see some interesting separate countries. Let me go to a dialog box here and show you what happened, for example, in Yemen. Yemen had a fairly unique pattern. So what I've done here is I've marked Yemen, and I'm also going to leave breadcrumbs so you can follow the path of Yemen. Unlike most of the world, for which the fertility rate decreased fairly uniformly, for a while in Yemen, the fertility rate went up. And it was only late in the 20th century that Yemen showed the same pattern as the rest of the world. You're looking here at a windrose diagram. Windrose diagrams are used to show the distribution of wind direction and wind speed at a particular location. This is the data for midnight at Parkdale, Oregon. Data was recorded for several months and you're seeing that at midnight the predominant direction of the wind is from the south, and it tends to be less than five knots. If I let the data change throughout the day, and you'll notice it's changing here on an hourly basis, hour by hour, by the time we get to noon, the predominant direction has changed. It's become westerly, and there's a lot more pink showing that the average wind speed is greater at noon than it tends to be at midnight. A very interesting dynamic graph for a very specific application. All of the data I analyzed in this presentation was downloaded from the internet. Here are the data sources. All the graphs I demonstrated in this presentation were created by a program called Stat Graphics Centurion. You can get more information about Stat Graphics at www.statgraphics.com.